Hallelujah. We're good, Uncle Jello? Okay. So welcome again in the name of the Lord Jesus. I welcome each and every one of you for this amazing, amazing day that the Lord has given us an opportunity to be in his presence again. And I pray that the Lord Jesus will honor you and me by glorifying his presence amongst us. Uh, I know that uh, yesterday was deep, but today is going to be too much. Amen. I, I'm going to go deeper into this subject. Amen. I am going to go deeper into this subject. Amen. So I need you to understand that uh, God is going to move in a special way. I need you to share this as many times as you can 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 and then we will begin we can turn it off now uh, as many times as you can and then when you have shared just say uh, prophet I've shared and then we will begin and I know the Lord Jesus will minister to us in a mighty way. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm looking at your comments, seeing that, okay. Okay. So who can remember a quick recap of, uh, of yesterday? Uh, what we spoke about yesterday. We need them. You see where the mic is? Yeah. We started a covenant keeping God. Mm -hmm. He keeps his promises, but only by his covenant. Mm -hmm. He's entitled to keep those promises. Okay. Okay, what else? Yes. Deep, deep. Okay, what else? What else does anybody remember? God had promised uh, Isaac or mm -hmm. Abraham so much, but only the time when he was ready to give his son and gave the ram, actually uh, cut the ram and put it at the altar, was the covenant uh, applied or okay. completed. Okay. Aha, Kimberly, Kimberly summarized it so well. Kimberly killed it. God is bound by covenant, not promises. That is extra powerful. Can you just mute me for a second? Uh,
ਤੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਹੀ ਦੇਖਦੇ Okay, can everybody hear me now? It should be perfect now. Is everything perfect now? Is everything clear now? Okay, perfect. I want you to share this as much as you can then we get going. I'm waiting for you to share and then we get going. If you are ready and you have shared just I want to see flames of fire and then we get going. I just need to see flames of fire and then we get going. I just need to see flames of fire and then we get going. I just need to see flames of fire and then we get going. Fire. Okay. 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 Powerful. Okay, everybody is now okay. Okay, everybody is ready now. Bless the Lord Jesus. Perfect. Now, I'm going to teach you part 2 of this. We know God is a covenant keeping God. We know that God primarily functions off covenants. but you have to understand that god is not god can change his mind but he does not change his purpose god says i change not me god personally i don't change and i am not a man that i should lie so we know god doesn't lie we know that he himself his nature doesn't change meaning his purpose will never change but he will do anything that it takes to make sure that his purpose is fulfilled Amen. what he wants to get done will be fulfilled an example if i go astray and maybe i was not in any kind of covenant with god god can just replace me like the same way god re- replaced saul yeah. with david mm-hmm. david was announced and initiated by a covenant while Saul was brought in simply because he was chosen by Saul by 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 Samuel Samuel chose him Samuel blessed him he became king he became the anointed of God it means somebody can be anointed of God and still not be in a covenant with God you can be anointed by god and not be in a covenant with god i wish somebody could hear me you can be anointed by god you can be chosen by god but still not be in a covenant with god <laughs> wow wow is somebody catching me listen yes. papa now you need to comprehend that god is a spirit because god is a spirit the ways of god are also spiritual amen mm. so there are things that god will never be obligated to is only obligated to himself what does love mean you know everybody says that god is love 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 that's why the bible says love is patience love is this love because love is a person yes what is love love is a selfless act amen love is a self selfless act i am doing this because i choose to do it even though it will cost me So we say God is love. But when God was giving his son Jesus according to John chapter 1 uh, J- John 3:16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. 
God inconvenienced himself in order to make a covenant to secure humanity. Wow. You, you just think, many people just think Jesus died for the sake of dying for humanity. No, it was mm. a covenant. Yeah. In Genesis chapter 2, God told Adam, mm -hmm. on the day you will eat of this tree, you will surely die. Certainly, not maybe. Yeah. Even if you repent, even if you change, you will surely die. The point is you have to die. Okay. That was established by God, by the first man that mm. he made. You see, God is already operating with the first man on his first day walking on the earth. God is already setting principles. I don't know if somebody is getting this. Listening. You know, you think, me and you usually think we can just do whatever with God, just act however with God. Listen to me, it does not work like that. Mm. It doesn't work like that. So from the first day God is making Adam, he makes him stand before uh, uh, the tree of good and evil of the knowledge of good and evil, and tells him, uh, listen, you can eat of every tree, mm -hmm. but don't eat this one. Notice God is already, from the jump, he doesn't begin by, I love you so much, yes, yes. no matter what you do, is okay. No, 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 God says, listen, I've given you everything, but this one, don't touch it. The day you touch it, yeah. the day you eat of it, you will surely die. Mm. Meaning that it will not matter how much you correct yourself. Yeah. It will not matter mm -hmm. how much you repent, right. how many burnt offerings you offer. God established it on the day. He's telling the first human being, meaning it will affect every human being right. out of him. So God is already setting a condition. I have given you the ability to live. But if you touch this, you will surely die. Wow. Period. We all know what happened. Eve went first, Adam went second. Mm. Immediately, as far as God was concerned, they were dead. But what brought death? was an act of disobedience to a law that God had established yes. for them to have long life. Hmm. I don't know when I was preaching and I was saying, uh, uh, if you want long life, don't pray, God, give me long life. Look for an old man and old woman that you can mm -hmm. respect them as your parents and start honoring them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Naturally, you don't need to fast and pray, Father, long life, mm -hmm. fire, <laughs> long life, in the name of Jesus, la <laughs> kapa. Is that a <laughs> waste of time? God already told you, you honor elders, especially your mother and father, you will live long, Amen. period. It's not a matter of praying. An example is this. If you look at Asian cultures, especially if we go to like China, yeah. we go to like China, and even some parts of Africa, especially mm -hmm. West and Central Africa, people live too long. Yes. Because they live by the code of honor. A lot of the Asian people, Chinese or Japanese people, many of them are not even believers, but they live longer than believers. Why? Because you honor a principle that God has set up, it bears fruits. It's simple. These things are simple. So you can fast for one year, for 10 years, I will live long, I declare it. If you disrespect people, <laughs> 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 you know those uh, uh, seven, is it seven Ghanaian or six Ghanaian men? Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> the dancing guys, they're already dancing from I don't know where. Because as far as God is concerned. <laughs> they have a casket. They have a casket, they're already dancing. <laughs> Ready to go. 
Are, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, Papa. It won't matter how much you pray. Those guys are somewhere already with the techno song. <laughs> fire. Somebody shout fire. Fire. Ay, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Is this making sense? Yes. Now, the question is this now. Can a man make a covenant with God? Mm -hmm. This is the focus today. Mm. Amen. Can a man make a covenant with God? And what is a covenant? Mm. Can a man make a covenant with God? And what is a covenant? Let's read the Bible a little bit. Amen. Amen. Let's read the word of God for a little bit. Let's read the, the scriptures a little bit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Is everybody ready? Yes, ready, Papa. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 34, verse 13. Uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah 34, chapter... Um, Chapter 34, verse 14. Verse 13. 30. 34, 13. Amen. You have a mic? Okay, go ahead. Thus saith the Lord, mm -hmm. the God of Israel, mm -hmm. I made a covenant with your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. Now, everywhere you ever read about a covenant in the scriptures, mm -hmm. Uh, the, co the word covenant or the covenant is mentioned 264 times Jeez. in the Bible. Wow. wow. The word covenant itself, this is what it means. It means an alliance or a pledge between men. Hmm. A treaty or a, a treaty, you know, like a peace treaty. Mm -hmm. a, constitution, a constitution, an ordinance. Mm. An agreement or a pledge between God and man. Wow. wow. A wow. covenant is an is a divine ordinance with signs or pledges between God and man. Amen. So when there is a covenant, there is always somebody making the covenant, somebody keeping the covenant. Mm -hmm. And somebody in danger of violating the covenant. Mm. Wow. Mm. 264 times. 64, wow. wow. Not 16. So where there is a covenant, there are three things. One, a person who is making a covenant. Mm -hmm. A person who is to keep the covenant. And a violation of the covenant. So whoever is making the covenant has to have the ability to keep it and not violate it. Wow. If you make a covenant, you have to be able to keep it and not what? Violate it. it. Now, the only issue is that no human being can make a covenant with God. We can make a vow to God. Are you listening to me? Yes. You can make a vow to God. You can make a vow to God. But no human being can make a covenant with God. Mm. I wish somebody could hear me. We hear you. I'll say that one more time. Deep. You can vow to God, you're most likely going to break it or mess it up, but no human being can make a covenant with God. It's impossible. Wow. 
The reason why no human being can stand before God and make a covenant is because no human being is consistent. We are prone to mess up. It's easy for us to break <laughs> the covenant because, okay, an example is, if God says, I will bless you, don't ever sin. <laughs> Just the fact that you sin already violates the covenant. Wow. Just the fact that you think evil, you're already in violation of a covenant. So it will be impossible for any human being to be able by any means to keep a covenant with God. It's impossible. That is why Jesus, our Lord and Savior, he was so unique in nature because he was a human being that never violated anything. Mm. Jesus. But remember, that same Jesus was also who? God. God. Yeah. <laughs> so we have it easier because we were secured by God, by God himself. Mm. So it is impossible for you to enter into a covenant with God because number one, we have nothing to offer God. Your own life is his own. Mm. So what are you going to bribe God with? <laughs> and tell wow. God, God, listen, <laughs> I'm going to make a covenant with you. Jesus. Here, here, here Lord. <laughs> Look. <laughs> I'm going to do this and do this and you do this, Lord. You know, with some prayers we make is just like, hey, what is wrong with us? <laughs> you cannot. Oh my God. Wow. Number one, you have nothing to offer God. The very life you have is his. Amen. You are because he decided it. <laughs> Deep. <laughs> so, you cannot make any deal that will be impressive to God. <laughs> because God already has authority over all flesh. So, election by grace brings people into covenants with God. Amen. God, just because he has decided, because he wants, he chose Prophet Lovi, not because he did anything, and brought me into a covenant with himself. Amen. Wow. Let me see somebody ask that question on you, on you. So what needs to happen for God to make a covenant with you. <laughs> Don't worry, we are getting there. <laughs> you, you are too fast. You need to understand these small things first. Somebody says we can only give God gratitude and thanksgiving. Listen, even angels already do that, so it's not really special. Wow. You have to understand we have nothing to give God. Wow. Okay, an example is this. I remember when Andrew, my son, was, uh, even sometimes now he does it. Now he's actually a really good artist. I think he took after his uncle Christian and uh, my mother. Because Christian, uh, his art game, crazy. Christian could draw like crazy. And, uh, and my mother was also a deep artist. So Andrew now he's like sketching crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. He's drawing like really good. I'm like, Okay, okay, uh, okay. But when he started, he'll be, Dad, look what I drew for you. He's been doing this since he was three years old. Just, oh, baby, this is so good. Not because it's the greatest. 
It's just because he's my child. Amen. He did some, do you know what I'm saying, Uncle yeah. Jello? It's just, okay, this is my baby. Oh, he made this, he's trying so hard. Oh, this is so, that's how God feels about us. Amen. When you come to God, like, God, <laughs> God, he's just, oh, he, I give you thanks, Lord. You are good. God, God is like, oh, my cute baby, look at what they're doing. Oh, they can recognize what I did. Oh, oh God. Not because you can see the full picture. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Wow. Uh -huh. Now you see, deals is not necessarily a covenant. A vow is a deal. Let's make a deal. Mm. It's different from a vow. Are you get, are you, uh, a yes, vow yes. Is, is also a deal. A covenant is a contract. Those are two different things. Yeah. God loves deal, big time. Is like Hannah said, Lord, you give me a son, I will give him back to you. She didn't base it off anything except God, you give me, I give it back. God was like, okay, I like this deal. Hmm. I need a prophet anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, the ones that I chose kind of, okay, I will give you a son so you can give him back to me. Wow. And then she had many more sons. Amen. That was not a covenant. That was simply a what? A deal. Yeah. God needed something, she needed something, and they settled it. God opened her womb, she gave God the child, and she had many more other children. Amen. That was a deal, that was a vow, not a covenant. A covenant is a contract. A vow is simply a deal. It's like, hey, you know what? Uh, take my shift and I'll take yours next week. That's a deal. All right, cool, 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 cool. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> but why was God interested in this deal? It's because God had something to gain. Mm. God already had other people. But why was Samuel more important to God? Let's go to the book of Samuel. Let me show you something. And then I will explain to you how you get into covenants with God. Amen. 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 Mm. Because people are going too quick. So let me let me go into the book of first Samuel. Now look at this. Okay, let's read this. First uh, Samuel chapter 1 verse 11. Can you read that? Amen. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 11. And she vowed a vow. Ah, what did she do? <laughs> vowed, vowed a, a vow. vow. Did she make a covenant? Mm -mm. No. no. What did she vow? And said, O Lord of hosts, Mm -hmm. If thou wilt indeed look on the, on the affliction of thine handmaid, mm -hmm. and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, mm -hmm. but wilt give unto thine handmaid a man-child, mm -hmm. then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, mm -hmm. and there shall no razor come upon his head. Mm -hmm. So she's saying, Lord, I promise you, I promise you, mm -hmm. 100%, and yes. you know I mean yes. this thing. You give me this baby, I'll give him back to you. Mm -hmm. And to make sure that you know that I'm here, even his hair will not cut, to show that he's set apart. Amen. She made a vow. She didn't make any covenant. Yes. There was no wow. covenant. That's why she asked God to have mercy. Mm -mm. God, if you look upon your servant with mercy, mm. you get what I'm saying? Yes, Papa. She vowed a vow, meaning she meant what she said. Many of you always say, Lord, if you take me out of this trouble, Lord, I will never do it again. God takes you out next week. Lord, if you take me out of this one for yes, sure, yes. <laughs> he delivers you again. Next week, Father, oh God Almighty, <laughs> so power. Lord, if you take me out of this, oh God is just looking at you saying, you. Uh, <laughs> it's just like my son will say, Dad, 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 Dad. <laughs> if you buy me candy today, I won't ask for it for a year. When he's small, I'm like, <laughs> here's candy. Two days later, Dad, 
I promise this time for real, for real. <laughs> so, so the one before wasn't for real. Because remember, we are like children unto God, you know? Yeah. So even when people sometimes, you know, we all need help once in a while. Mm -hmm. I'll need help. You'll need help. Usually when people come and say, ah, prophet, I will never ask again. You are definitely going to yeah, ask again. again. Just ask. Don't put conditions you can't keep. See, that's why the Lord Jesus said, let your answers be simple. Yeah. I promise this time. <laughs> cross my heart. <laughs> Pinky promise. <laughs> I, I, ne <laughs> First Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. Uh -huh. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the world of the Lord was pr precious in those days. Uh -huh. There was no open vision. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place mm -hmm. and his eyes began to wax dim mm -hmm. that he could not see. Mm. And Eri the lamp mm -hmm. of God went out in the temple of the Lord mm -hmm. where the ark of God was and Samuel was laid down to sleep. Mm -hmm that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, here, I am, here am I. Okay, now listen to me carefully. Why didn't God speak to Samuel ever hmm. until when Samuel began to minister to Eli? Hmm. Because... Ah, uh, not really, Chris. Close. Hmm. But I'll tell you why. It's because you have to remember... God had ordained mm. Aaron's lineage mm -hmm. to be priests unto him, mm. Levites. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. And they were supposed to represent the people of Israel before God. Yes. So there is a covenant that God established with Levites. Mm. You will be my priests and this and this. Number one. Okay? Yes. Number two. Eli was selected by God. He already entered, he was entered into a, a covenant that his forefathers were a part of. Yeah. So when Samuel now is ministering to Eli, he's, the Bible says literally, and the boy Samuel ministered unto the Lord in the presence of Eli. So when God looked at Samuel, mm -hmm. he did not see Samuel by himself. He saw Eli, then Samuel. Mm. When Samuel prayed to God, it went through Eli, the yeah. port of Eli, before it got wow. to God. Why? Because God has no dealing with Samuel unless Samuel is aligned with Eli. Wow. Because Eli has a deal with God through his fathers. Samuel doesn't know anything. He's just a child. God is angry with Eli. Mm. But God wants to talk to Samuel. He cannot talk to Samuel independent of Eli. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. Wow. So when God is speaking to Samuel, Samuel cannot even tell the difference of God's voice yes. and Eli's voice. That is true sonship. Wow. He could not tell the difference. Is this God? Is it? He didn't even know that it was God. He went to his spiritual father. He said, Father, did you call me? He said, no, I didn't call you, my son. Mm -hmm. Go back to bed. God calls him again. He said, did you really call me? He, remember, now watch this. Let me show you this is something really funny. Uh, uh, read verse 4. 1 um, Samuel 3, verse 4. Begin for 3 to 4. Uh, amen. And ere the Lamb of God went out in the temple of the Lord, mm -hmm. where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. That the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, mm. Here am I. Mm -hmm. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. Notice he said, Here am I, what? Twice. Right. Go to verse 7. I feel the presence of Jesus. Amen. Read verse 7. Amen. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Ah, uh ah. -uh. He was in the house of the Lord. He did not uh. know yet know the Lord, but God is speaking to him. Wow. So it means that the quickest way for God to talk to you is who you are with. Wow, amen. I, amen. I wish somebody could understand that. That's this good. is a child who yet does not know the Lord. He mm. doesn't know God yet. 
He's just ministering to Eli. Yes. But God begins to talk to him. He's not anointed a priest. Nothing has happened. Wow. Wow. Uh, I wish you could understand what God is revealing to us. Read verse 7 again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Mm -hmm. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and mm -hmm. said, mm -hmm. Here am I, mm -hmm. for thou didst call me. Mm -hmm. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Mm -hmm. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, yes. Go lay down, and it shall be, if he call thee, mm -hmm. that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thou servant he hear it. Stop right there. That means that the one, even though God wanted to talk to Samuel so bad, mm -hmm. without Eli unlocking the keys for him, Samuel is not talking to God. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Go, go ahead. So, in essence, without a spiritual parent, we can't truly engage. Sorry? Without a spiritual parent, we can't truly engage with God to the maximum. Not necessarily. It depends on if God has called you. Mm. And to what degree he has called you. Amen. What are you serving? Amen. Are you getting? Amen. Wow. So even though the, he tells you literally, and the boy Samuel did not know the Lord yet, yet he was in the house of God mm -hmm. ministering unto Eli. Of course he knew about certain things, but knowing God himself is a different thing. Mm -hmm. This is where a lot of Christians are. Mm -hmm. So the access yes. that he could have, even though it was a man rejected by God, he still had the keys to unlock somebody else to speak to God. Wow. And God only spoke to Samuel because he was in the presence of Eli. And the presence of Eli carried the presence of God. Wow. Deep. You know when people say have a relationship with God, mm -hmm. you forget that it is impossible to have a relationship with God without a man. My God. I know some religious people don't like to hear this, but I'm telling you the Teaching truth. Good, Papa. If nobody teaches you about God, you have no relationship with God. It's that simple. <laughs> if nobody teaches you how to do anything, how are you going to do that thing on your own? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> it's just common sense. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I posted a, a post saying, you are secured. I prophesy you are secured. Amen. And somebody says, I will only say amen to this if we read the Bible 100%, stay away from evil, and then, you know, I can really agree to amen. I was like, and she said, you know, it's very hard, but we have to do it. That shows you that you are thinking what you do is what makes God respond to you. Yeah. Hey. And I know the person means well. Mm -hmm. They just don't know any better. Yeah. Is somebody getting what I'm trying to say? Yes, Papa. Is somebody picking what I'm, I'm saying here? Yes, yes Papa. Papa. Some of you, you've been criticizing men and women of God. You don't know they're your key. Wow. If you are so special, why didn't God call you? Come on, Papa. Is somebody getting this? Yes. Yes, yes. I'm going somewhere. Don't worry. I'm just looking at people's. I'm just looking at uh, uh, people's comments. I have a question. A prophet says that God wants to use me and her for the end time. Is that possible for God to use? Uh, God can use anybody for the end time. He can use a whole family, a whole household. Does that mean that God spoke? I don't know. I don't know the prophet. I wasn't there. I don't know what was happening. But can God use people? Like an example, I am serving God with my sons and daughters that are here. By them ministering to me, they are actually ministering to God. Mm. Amen. So good. Amen. Amen. 
That is why everything we do must be done with excellence because you're doing it unto God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Now, let, let, let me help you. Let me go a little further. Are you ready? Yes, Father. Is everybody, everybody ready? Yes, Father. Are you ready? Because God doesn't usually make covenants. There are established covenants already. Mm. There is a covenant that God made with Abraham. There's a covenant that we have through our only Savior, the Lord Jesus. A covenant's nature is God coming to you and saying, listen, <laughs> I will make my covenant with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll do this and do this, just keep doing this. So we know covenants are made by God because God is the only one who can uphold it. Amen. The reason why, the reason why God had to come as a human being to make a, a, a covenant, you know, when we, we say the New Testament, mm. testament, the word testament is a testament to what the, the, the covenant is. Amen. The wow. new covenant and the old covenant. The new testament is not just a title. It's showing you we have two contracts here. Mm. There's an old one established and perfected by a new one. Mm. Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. Now watch this. I'm getting somewhere now. There are already established covenants that God made with Israel, his people, who we are part of. God rarely will come to you and make a covenant with you. It's a rare thing. It's not, it's not an easy thing. And you have no influence on it. It's only him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Your wisdom is to enter into the covenant that already is established. Mm. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Wisdom will say, <laughs> let me enter into already what already exists. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. The issue is everybody wants to reinvent the, the will. Mm -hmm. If I see God using somebody in a mighty way, I don't need to criticize them. I need to know how they got there for me also to be a partaker of that to the glory of God. Yes. You have to remember that there are two things. God will give you what is sufficient for you to do the work. Yes. But if you are wise, you can pick up more things to help you do it even easier. Wow. Mm. I'll give you an example. Do you realize people who condemn prosperity gospel, mm. they are believing for financial breakthrough? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Is this not true? It's a hundred percent true. If you don't believe in that, why are you telling people to give towards what you want God to do? Mm. I thought God supplies for his own things. Mm. <laughs> That's deep. <laughs> now, we are not saying that they are not called. Mm -hmm. We are not saying they are not called. But they are not wise enough mm -hmm. to pick up what others were given to yeah. make their calling easier. Mm -mm. Elisha was so smart. He knew God had called him. Elijah poured. Imagine if Elijah was on earth right now. Mm -hmm. He's in California. <laughs> in a certain place. You know Elijah Amen. is there. Mm -hmm. Elijah takes oil, pours on you, say, now okay. I declare mm -hmm. you a prophet to the nation by the Spirit of God. And then he walks away. 
many of you will start your ministry immediately. Yes, yes. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, but Elisha was wise. Do you know what Elisha did? Mm. Say, man, I don't know how to prophesy. I can't see in the spirit. I need power. The only way I will tap into this, I need to follow this man. Wow. Elijah didn't tell him anything. Elijah mm -hmm. just prayed for him and walked away. Yeah. Wow. He started chasing him. <laughs> <laughs> he said, please, let me serve you. He said, what do I have to do with you? He said, no, please, let me serve you. He went home, cooked for his family, and then followed him. He, he did everything in his house and then followed him. Cooked for his family and then followed him. Looked for him and followed him. And he ministered to him in such a deep way. No, he can't. You guys can. It's okay. You can take him down and come up. And ministered to him in such a deep way. That he became one who manifested everything Elijah did mm. and some. Wow. It's called wisdom. Yeah. When you serve the grace, are you listening to me? Yes, when you serve the grace, you are also tapping into the covenant. The Bible says there is nothing new under the sun. There is nothing new under the sun. What does that mean? Every man of God that is truly called by God, they are under a certain covenant. Wow. Whether it is knowingly or unknowingly. Because you are not going to operate independent of something that already existed. Try. This is why John the Baptist carried the spirit of Elijah. <laughs> Amen. Is somebody getting what I'm saying so far? Yes, Papa. Catching, Papa. So you need to comprehend, how can I tap into a covenant? Adam and Eve were in the garden. They got kicked out of the garden. His sons and daughters started offering things to God. And the presence of God that was in the garden started following them. They learned something from their fathers that is not disclosed where they learned it. Yeah. But somebody had to teach them. Mm -hmm. They tapped into what Adam and Eve had in the garden outside of the garden. Mm. You see this custom going even unto Abraham. These people were wise. Mm -hmm. They were not trying to reinvent the wheel. They were working the daylights out of something that was already working. You know, in Africa, when you have toothpaste, <laughs> you know why you're laughing, Jello? Because that toothpaste will be used. They will squeeze, the, you know, they will squeeze, that thing will be so flat, even the little that remains where the top is. Listen, there will be no toothpaste in that toothpaste, uh, uh, what's it called, container or tube or whatever it's called. When they buy a new toothpaste, it's because there's actually no toothpaste. Some people, I remember, they will go as far as to cut the bottom, open it up, put their toothbrush in there, and you, that thing has to die. Mm. When it's dead, then now they can justify buying a new one. That is how a Christian should be. You need to abuse that, not in, in a sinful way, but you need to work grace until grace is... Mm. But you can't even run it out. Hello? Hello. 
When you get a jar of Vaseline, that Vaseline, if it's over, it's really you think somebody took a napkin and wiped it clean in there because there will be no trace of ever Vaseline being in there. It means that thing was used systematically with such deep dedication, with such focus, with such intensity. <laughs> My daughter Janet Elias <laughs> Kinyanjui says, you have brought me back to those days. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus had that spirit. Remember, Jesus grew up part of his life in Africa. He multiplied bread, and everybody satisfied. Say, hey, collect the baskets. <laughs> <laughs> He said, collect every, get baskets, collect every remaining crumb. Tomorrow we are not going to be praying for bread. Collect every one of them. <laughs> Jesus grew up around Africans for a time of his life, so we are not <laughs> shocked. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some people will say, where is it written? Jesus was taken to Egypt when he was a young boy. So maybe for the first nine years of his life or ten years of his life, he was in Africa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> my son Michael is saying, <laughs> my wife is African. <laughs> uh, Kimberly is deep. <laughs> that, hallelujah. Somebody <laughs> gels. Did you just put, <laughs> do you remember the time? That's deep. <laughs> so capture this. A covenant works because you have honored the covenant. You have acknowledged the covenant and you have honored the covenant. Anyone who does not acknowledge what Jesus did on the cross, they cannot tap into the grace of the cross. I'll say that again. The reason why we say precious is the blood of the Lord Jesus is we are acknowledging, even though the blood is not Jesus, but we acknowledge the pen that was used to seal the covenant that secured us. Wow. So we honor the blood of Jesus, even though the blood of Jesus is not Jesus. We honor Jesus for the sacrifice of his life. Lord, we thank you for giving your precious. Why are we not saying we just thank you for giving your life? We thank you for giving your precious life that was so blameless for my sake. If you don't acknowledge these things, you will never really tap into the fullness of the grace wow. and the covenant that was delivered by the cross. This is why you find even when people are doing great uh, uh, um, signings of certain things, you notice that that pen is, is treasured. Yeah. If anyone would find the pen that was used to write the Constitution, at least the first draft, do you know how much worth that pen would be? I don't know if it's something that already has been done, but I'm just trying to say not because the pen is the constitution, but this is the means in which. The blood of Jesus is not Jesus. The blood of Jesus is not Jesus. It is a means of which Jesus used. To secure us. Wow. The body was the body of Jesus in a sense. The blood was the blood of Jesus in a sense. But remember God is spirit. 
but we still acknowledge the humanity of Christ. You see, you will never understand the value of the covenant that the Lord Jesus delivered for our sake. If you just think about Jesus as a divine God. When the Lord Jesus was on earth, the fullness of the Godhead was within him, for sure. But his humanity was 100%. He was tempted, he was hungry, he was tested, he had infirmities. He went through all these things. The Bible tells you. He suffered temptation. You just know about the three temptations. He was tempted more than that. The three were more significant. Remember the Bible says, and the devil tempted him and the devil was banished. He left until a later time. But you have no record of a later time, except the time that Peter came and said, Lord, you'll never go on the cross and said, walk thee behind me, Satan. Mm. But there were many other times. It's just not recorded because it's not necessary. The first one was very necessary because it was, it was, a, 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 it was, a, a, it was like a landmark of the beginning of Jesus' ministry. If he failed there, he failed the whole ministry. It did not matter if he redeemed himself later. That's good. If you don't acknowledge, I wish somebody would share this and listen to me. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Jesus. Mm. I'm listening, Papa. Oh, Jesus. I wish somebody could hear me. I want people to share before, before we bring it close to the end. Oh, Jesus. Lord, we honor you and we love you. We love you too much, Lord. We love you too much, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm waiting for people to share. Hallelujah. 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 I'm waiting for people to share. We are coming close. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Mm. Mm. And God will do it. No. <laughs> <laughs> and God will do it. Oh Lord Jesus, you're just so amazing. Is somebody ready? Are you there? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, Papa. So I'll say it again. You know, some people have no shame completely. No shame. If anybody ever posts on a timeline telling you, oh, why am I homeless? This, um, I'm this, this, send me on my cash app. You have a cash app. <laughs> <laughs> you pay your phone bill. You have all those things. But you see how people are just, ignorance is really bad. And yet it's deception. It's lies. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Is everybody ready? Ready, Papa. So the key is, how can I enter into a covenant? First, we must acknowledge it. You cannot, you see, God is always measuring people because God knows the hearts of men. So God is always calculating by seeing your heart. Remember, you cannot deceive God. You can deceive everyone. You can deceive everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, Father. You can deceive everyone, but you cannot deceive God. So the way I can enter into something that God has already established is number one, I need to recognize what God has established. I need to know what are the benefit in it. If I ask a Christian right now, do you realize that Jesus dying on the cross brought a salvation, right? Yes. Brought everybody what? Salvation. The Bible says that Jesus was poor so that through his poverty you may be rich. Right? Yes. What was the riches that you're going to receive from Jesus? Was what his father Abraham had. Mm. What his father David had. So if you don't recognize what Jesus came to fulfill, you will only benefit from a small portion of what Jesus came to do. You will get eternal life. We will see you in heaven. But when you get to heaven and realize the blessing and the kind of blessed life you should have had on earth, you will regret it. You will smack yourself a few times. So it is your duty as a child of God to understand what God said he would do for Israel. So that when you reactivate this covenant, you know what you're looking out for. When you start working that covenant, you know what you're working Some of you ask God to bless you as if you are an orphan. <laughs> Yet the reason why you're not getting the blessing is because you don't recognize you are under an established covenant that guarantees blessing. Wow. But you don't know even if you are under a co covenant. You just know I'm going to heaven. I'm born again full of the Holy Ghost. Wow. It goes much deeper and it goes much farther. Is somebody listening? Yes, yes, yes. yes, we hear you. So it is up to you to really capture this knowledge and understand. What did Isaiah say concerning the covenant? What did Isaiah say concerning the covenant? What did God tell David concerning the covenant? What did God tell Israel concerning the covenant? What did God say? So when you're praying, are you asking for mercy or are you asking according to the covenant? Wow. You see, the children of Israel knew they were under a covenant. When they were in the wilderness, they said, God, we want bread. And God gave them bread. They did not ask for mercy for bread because they knew what document was covering them that was going to get them bread? Mm -hmm. wow. wow. So it is vital for you not to be a, a Christian who just has feelings and emotions and liquid love. Mm -hmm. You need knowledge. Yeah. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. You don't know. That's why you're perishing. You are expiring. You're like a perishable. 
vegetable that is just withering away yet it should have never been like that. Wow. The angels of the Lord encamp around those who fear him. God told me in our covenant that I should fear him. You see, there are two things. The fear of God, you see the problem with liquid love, it has diluted the word of God a little bit. That's why I don't like liquid love. <laughs> God says literally, don't fear the devil. Fear me who can destroy both the body and soul in hell. So there is the reference part of God, but there is a part that you know that God is not a joke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So people will say the fear of God only means reverence. No, there is also like true fear. Not because it's going to destroy you, because you're on the good side of it. No, but you really need to fear God. You know, many of you have never been before God, so there's some things you don't know. Yes, you have been before God. Technically, you have been before his presence. But yeah. God appearing to yeah, you like yeah, this. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Moses was so bold until he stood before the burning bush. <laughs> The children, are, yeah, we want to see God. When God started coming down from them, they said, Moses, we believe today you are a true prophet. Please go on the mountain, talk to God. Amen. Just keep bringing us messages. Amen. We don't need to see God. You keep seeing him and bring us the messages. We are okay. <laughs> Do you understand the fear of God is literally a spirit? Wow. It's one of the seven spirits of God. And the spirit of the fear of the Lord, the reverence, the understanding of who God is, comes from the spirit of the fear of the Lord, not love. There is a certain shaking that you get when you're before God. You know he loves you, but there is a terror that is a holy terror that comes on you. <laughs> ah, Jehovah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And his eyes were like flashes of lightning. Ah, you want to tell me you will not be afraid? <laughs> you're seeing somebody, you're just seeing flashes of lightning. <laughs> Like torches, he looks at you, looks like he's looking through you. <laughs> he's looking at you and you know that you are naked before him. You will be, oh Lord Jesus. Oh. You will be on your face laying down trembling like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, listen. Being before God is no joke. Oh, liquid love. Mm -hmm. An angel will appear to you and you will get scared. Terror will hit you. A terrible terror will hit you that the angel will have to calm your blood pressure down. Do not be afraid. Relax. <laughs> calm down. Breathe. I'm sent from the presence of, Lord, of the Lord. Calm down. Relax. Even an angel. Yo, you guys are not listening to My me. My God. Listen, Papa. This is deep. Somebody asked, can you do the uh, teaching on the seven spirits of God? I have, right? You have. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, it's there, yeah. I think it's there. It's there. You need to go watch it. I think it's called what? Come on. Yeah. Mm. It's a deep thing. When you, when you just sin carelessly, you don't have the spirit of the fear of, of the Lord. You have the spirit of the Lord which made you, you remember, no one can call Jesus Lord except by the spirit of God. So if you have professed Jesus as Lord, it's because you have the spirit of the Lord. But there is the spirit of might. There is the spirit of the fear of God. There are seven. Mm -hmm. So having the spirit of the Lord doesn't mean you have the spirit of the fear of the Lord. When you see a Christian who can speak in tongues, rabba ba ka ka ta laba, and then next minute they are cursing out people and all that, you know they don't have the spirit of the fear of, of, of the Lord in them. You see, I do, I do uh, uh, Muay Thai, mixed martial arts. I train every morning. And uh, when we're in the gym, my coach is called Coach, uh, coach Julio. 
or we call him Crew Julio. And whenever the coach is in class, when he's teaching us, and everybody now is working with their partner, when the coach comes and is watching you, people do extra. Everyone now is even more on point. But when he's not watching, okay, you know, you're just like, okay, you can play. But when coach is watching, he's standing right there looking. You try to be so perfect, power and everything. You try to emphasize everything. You just want to hear, okay, good. Yeah. The reason why you don't feel like that is because the, the spirit of the fear of God makes you aware that God's eye is watching you. Mm -hmm. So there are things that you will not do because you fear. You know, God is watching me. People who don't have the awareness that God is watching them don't have the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So they can be careless because it's okay. And then when they are praying, they say, oh Lord, what I did, knowingly and knowingly. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing very well the eye of the Lord was seeing you. Wow. But because you, you, you don't have the spirit of the fear of God, you are not conscious of God. You don't have the reverence not to offend God. The Bible says, do not, do not grieve the spirit of God. You grieve him because we grieve him because many of us don't have the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So we just do our thing and then we say sorry and it's cool. You don't feel any remorse, nothing. Because the fear, spirit of the fear of the Lord is not there. I'm moving off topic. Let's come back. Maybe I'll do a teaching on that one day. Amen. Just specifically that. So capture this and capture this well. Okay, capture this and capture this well. You need to acknowledge the covenant for the covenant to work. Wow. So, I want us to give to God and Amen. then I will give you prophetic instruction on what you need to do in order to begin to benefit from what Jesus did. Amen. Amen. That is why some people, you are a believer, but healing is difficult to receive. The stripes of Jesus guaranteed our healing. But the idea of healing came that God promised Abraham that his descendants must be healed. Jesus made it easier for us to tap it in, into it. That is why when Jesus went into the temple and found a daughter of Abraham stricken by a demon, he was upset and healed her. Didn't even care that it was the Sabbath. So, I want you to remember, this is the month of altars. How many people have been watching, uh, have been doing a uh, power shot? Let me see how many people are doing power shot. Power shot, power, uh, power shot is this month will be extra deep. Eileen, you, you, you're doing power shot? No. Okay. I am. Okay, deep. Don't be like Lou. <laughs> If you have not done PowerShot yet, I think there's a link on my website, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you need to join PowerShot. To the website. Next year is even going to be deeper and crazier. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So you need to join PowerShot. Big time. Daily devotional with, uh, with, uh, uh, with me giving you scriptures, praying with you, giving you uh, giving you uh, um, scriptures, meditating with you, showing you uh, every day it's like I'm preaching to you and teaching you. Amen. So if you have not done power shot yet, you need to go to prophetlovey.com and, and it's there. It's a, a power shot is, a, is only what, a dollar a day? Yeah, so imagine. Yep, Less than a cup of coffee. Less than a cup of coffee, you're getting the power of God daily. Mm -hmm. This is not like a regular devotion. Yes. Bishop Kevin, God bless you more and more and more. Hallelujah. So let's go give to God and then we'll be back and God will bless you. So remember, this is the month of altars. So you want to keep your seeds in the 12th, 1 and 2. 
remember, a seed has to be something that costs you. Don't just give something because it's easy to give. Obviously, you can go above that. But make sure it's something that is substantial, that means something to you with the month and what you're doing. Go quickly and do it and then we'll be back.
No matter what the problem is, 
I know you can get me out of it. I can always count on you. I'm yours and I'm proud of it. Show me your grace. Show me your way. I'm seeking after you. Show me your face. I wanna know more. Keeping it 100, I was running, I was running, had to run the hard way. But you always up to something. If you said it, then it's done. I know it every time I pray. It's done. I won't walk away. Mercy on my days. All I can say. He made a way. For real. I was down bad out cast. He changed the way. I live. I've been riding around him all too long. Jesus, take the wheel. Take control. I know my fate is sealed. He made a way. For real, I was down bad, I can't see change the way I live. I've been riding around them all too long. Jesus, take the wheel, take control. I know my fate is sealed. I'm on a mission, I gotta finish, yeah. yeah. Made a commitment to go to distance, yeah. yeah. Made in his image, I can't diminish, yeah. No. I'm about his business, I gotta witness, yeah. Every second and every minute, yeah. As long as it with me, I got no limits, yeah. Man, I'm so dependent, gotta admit it, yeah. The burden been lifted, so I ain't tripping, nah. No. Nah. No. That's why I'm true to this. Had to put a moment, I had to bring the crew in it. Ain't no way to ruin it, it just keep on renewing it. I rock the Gucci with the gold crucifix switch. Oh no, he ain't through with me, yes. He made a way, for real I was down bad, I can't see change the way I live, I've been riding around him all too long Jesus, take the wheel, take control I know my fate is sealed He made a way, for real I was down bad, I can't see change the way I live, I've been riding around him all too long Jesus, take
God bless you all. And I hope you're ready now to pray. Amen. There's something very important that you have to do today. <laughs> it is in your own best interest to understand what Jesus facilitated, why it's called a better covenant, why it's called a new covenant, what was included in the old that was not in the new and what was in the old that is still part of the new. In this new one, there are certain things we don't need to do because Jesus fulfilled it for us. There are other things that Jesus made it easy for us to have access to. Yeah. Easier. Yeah. We don't have to justify ourselves anymore. He has justified us. So it is in your duty as a child of God to truly comprehend, truly understand. Somebody is saying my audio is low. Is it low? Okay. It's truly, truly important for you to know these things. If you, if you pray with me, but you don't go do the homework to receive those things and to know what is yours, you'll be like the, 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 the good son, not the prodigal one. The good son was in the house of God or the house of his father, but never benefited from being faithful to his father. Because remember, in this new covenant, you're not getting anything for your faithfulness. You're getting everything because of Jesus' faithfulness. <laughs> the new covenant removed us from the picture completely. But it's up to you to know. Is everybody following? If you're following, let me see some flames. Let me see some fires. Let me see some flames. The security you have because you're in the covenant, sealed by blood. Hallelujah. I'm seeing people really following. Okay. I'm happy. I like this. This is good. Glory be to the Lord Jesus. Glory be to the Lord Jesus. All right, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray now. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you and we bless you in the name of your son, Jesus, by whom we can approach you by whom you have opened the door for us to come to you. Your son Jesus who is the only way, the only truth and the only life and the only way to you Father God. We bless you our Father, our Lord and our God for giving us an opportunity to know the truth of your word. To know that Father you have established us and established your work in us through the covenant that you performed on the cross, through your son Jesus, by yourself or yourself, but us being benefactors of what you did. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you today that, Lord, your people, including myself, we are coming to the full knowledge, full comprehension, full understanding of what you did through our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Israel, we thank you, Father, that those things today will become those who can truly receive them because we know that, Lord, we are part of Israel. You grafted us into Israel. We know that, Father, it is our time now in this time and age to display your splendor and your greatness in every aspect of our life spiritually, physically, 
emotionally, financially. Father, we pray that every benefit according to your word that says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Today, Father, we activate every benefit. We activate every benefit by the altar that we raised and by the seed we put on the altar. Father, today we activate every benefit of being your son, of being your daughters. We activate it now, not only in our lives, but in our children and our children's children. In the name of Jesus, Father, let there be a transformation. Let there be a change. Let there be a shift. Let it be something that will shake the world, what you are doing through us now, this moment, this day. When January comes, Father, let us be a different people. Father, we bless you. We thank you again that it is done and it is fulfilled. In the name of your son, Jesus, your precious son, our Lord and our God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. 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 Now, Sean Francis, did you get what I asked you to get? I asked you to get honey. Did you get honey? If you didn't get honey yet, you need to go and get it. Because I'm looking spiritually and you don't have what I'm asking you for. Are you there? He's saying there is no honey, Papa. Did you go look for it or did you just settle? Did you go to the store? Did you find a store? Did you look in your house or did you go buy one? I asked you to go and buy one. This is how people miss opportunities. You know, when God gives you an instruction, move heaven and earth to do it. It benefits you, not God. Amen. I asked you to do something very specific. I told you, go to the store and buy honey. That's very simple. I don't believe if you go to any store, like a general store, like a, like a, like a, a Ralph's, Kroger's, whatever it may be, that you will not get honey. It's impossible. Listen, children of God, I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. I bless you and I'll see you tomorrow. Remember, Friday, I'll be preaching for Prophetess Taryn. And uh, it's going to be extra powerful. I don't want you to miss it. Amen. Amen. I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to miss it. I told a man to go get honey. He's telling me, can we use holy water? You're not serious. <laughs> Christians, I, Jesus. Hey. I'll be preaching for my daughter, Prophet Esteran, on Friday at 6, right? At 6. You don't want to miss it. I haven't ministered in front of people in a while. So it's going to be extra, 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 extra powerful. Extra, extra, extra powerful. So if you're in L.A., don't miss it. If you're in L.A., don't miss it. It will be life-changing. 
and I know there are others that are coming from out of town. I am excited to minister to you. It's going to be too much. See, Papa, I, I, I will have the honey tomorrow. The time is already passed. You, already, you see, delayed obedience is disobedience, people. You have to always understand, when God tells you to do something, and remember what I said, do it in the next 30 minutes, go and find it. Delayed obedience is disobedience to God. Many people are in the situation they are in because when God speaks, you take it lightly. And then you wonder why things are not changing. I literally went out of my way and I told you God's mind. And I told you, go get this honey. I will tell you what to do. I will literally look out for your DM for me to help you. But you're doing it at your own convenience. You know? It's, and that's another thing. I don't do DMs, but I'm telling you, message me. I'm looking for your message and I will help you in the next 30 minutes. You're saying, Papa, can we use water? I told you to get honey. Get what you're being told to get. There is a reason. You see, when God gives you a prophetic thing to do, in the process of being done, what is in the process of doing what God commanded you to do, that obedience already releases grace. You see, now if you say, Papa, I will go now. Two hours later, two hours later, that is wrong. That is two hours later. You're saying, Papa, I will go now. I said, in the next 30 minutes, go and get it. Then you said, yes, I will do it. Then now you're telling me, no, Papa, uh, can we use water? I will go tomorrow. Then, oh, now I will go now. You're not serious about God giving you deliverance. This is why God always gives prophetic instruction to test your heart. The obedience, you see, the honey is not the power. It is the obedience into what God is telling you to do that releases the grace to bring you to where God wants you to be. Delayed obedience is disobedience to God. I love you guys. God bless you. Shalom tomorrow.